Residents near the Ravencroft Institute are currently being evacuated by authorities for reasons unknown. Early reports say that this evacuation is due to a possible riot within Ravencroft. However, we have been unable to obtain any confirmation from the Institute itself. We are w Authorities are now advising the public within a 10 mile radius Yeah, I know. That's us. To remain inside and to lock and barricade your doors. Convicted murderer Cletus Cassidy has escaped from Ravencroft Institute and is currently at large. Mr. Cassidy is considered armed and extremely dangerous. If you have any information on Mr. Cassidy or if you see him, please contact authorities immediately. Do not approach What's that? This has been a special report. We now return you to your previously scheduled programming. Which is also me and this week's episode, where we will be focusing on the man, the myth, the symbiote, Carnage. Unlike many of media's other murderous madmen, Carnage doesn't need any conventional weapons or guns or explosives. All he needs to do is think. You can call it that. And with the help of his other, Carnage can transform any part of his body into any sort of bladed weapon. Whether it's a couple of claws to take out Wolverine or a katana to finally get Deadpool to shut up, Carnage can create. In that vein, today we will be creating a hand axe. Or an axe hand would be more appropriate maybe? Just in case we happen to run into any web sling wall crawlers that we need to decapitate. But enough talk, let's get building. Step one, as per usual, taking my outline to Inkscape. And for this particular little axe, there were many, many different varieties, I guess you could call them, to choose from. And so I kind of based it off of the comic, uh, his original run-in with Spider-Man, as well as the uh, Hot Toys sixth scale figure, I think it was. I missed out on it, so I'm a little bitter. But yeah, it was based on those. Hand is nice and molded. Now to attach this to this. After everything was cut out, the two blades were cemented together, taking very great care not to cement both blades completely shut, because that would be embarrassing even for me. And I'm sure you're wondering where this cuff came from because I didn't make any earlier. But I did, dear viewer. I made it during the Baraka arm blade build thing. This was a earlier cuff that I made and I was gonna toss it, but I started running low. And by that I mean I was running low on foam. So I decided to give myself a little bit of an extra challenge for this one and for the entire build I could only use scrap foam which is why as you can see here I'm cutting out extra parts to hide some giant gaps between the two faces of the axe blade. I'm trying to do my best to limit waste dang it and so should you. Think of the environment when making foam versions of lethal weapons. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit and apologize in advance. Right after I was done with this section, I didn't bother looking up at the camera to see that it was letting me know I had run out of space on the memory card. So... I'm afraid you won't get to see any sanding or quick filling of any gaps. But let me tell you, that was some epic, epic sanding. I would probably say the best sanding I have ever seen in my entire life. 
but sadly the world will never know. <sighs> okay, okay. Enough of this morbidness. Warp speed, Mr. Sulu. Sanding is all complete, as is my quick fill. Now my nemesis. But I'm going to be using this to create the little black tendrils that run up and down. Well, they run up and down everything on Carnage, don't they? One thing I've quickly learned with the FOMO, as with most clays, is you want to use a lot of water depending on if you want it to stick or not. If you don't want it to stick to something, make sure it's wet. But if you want it to stick to everything, make sure the wet FOMO dries. Then it'll stick to every little thing, no matter if you want it to or not. I'm pretty sure the water also helps the FOMO adhere to the actual foam. Whether or not it actually does that, I don't know. But it seemed to do the trick here. With the tendrils, there was no pattern or rhyme or reason. I just kind of tried to be as random as possible without looking like I just slapped it on there. So if you're gonna give one of these a shot, just go nuts, because in the end, pretty sure it's still going to look a lot like Carnage. Once I had achieved the perfect tendril to axe ratio, uh, I took the entire thing outside and hit it with about three to four layers of colonial red spray paint. And then I let that dry overnight. Once that was dried, I covered all of the tendrils in a little bit of matte black acrylic craft paint.
Okay, we're mostly finished with the X. Now just the last two steps of washing and sealing. Like it's a car. Nidge. <laughs> this time for the wash, instead of using watered down paint like I did last time, I'm gonna give shoe polish a try. See how that turns out. Hopefully it doesn't ruin my black paint job, but it probably will because there's water in it. for what is possibly the very last step in the axe a little bit of floor wax with that drop of black paint just because don't know if it actually does anything but only one way to find out Behold, the crossover that you will never see. You can just call me Burra Carnage. Crap, my nose itches. Sorry, Mr. Great Knife. I think I found my new favorite prop. And my new favorite color, definitely. And it's just this ordinary rattle can spray paint called Colonial Red, but I think we should rename it to Carnage Red because it just. I mean, can you see this? Seriously, can you see it? I don't know how well the color holds up on the camera. I mean, it is about as flexible as a brick, but I really don't care. It's the perfect blend of red and dark. Darkness? Dark red? Blood red, whatever. Not that sad excuse for a crimson color. And this build, and as well as my little measurement mistake from earlier. Yes, I mismeasured again. But this was actually the cuff. I don't know if I mentioned this cuff here was the original one I was gonna use for Baraka's arm. And kind of screwed it up, but I didn't want to throw it away. I'm not sure if I will cut it or if I'm kept it in, but I had this whole new head cannon of Carnage's creation. Like, what if the Carnage symbiote didn't exist? There is a Venom, and Cletus knows who Venom is, but he never actually received his own he just took the idea to ow that is solid okay it's not sharp but it's solid for example let's say he saw venom and spider-man fighting on the news and he's like you know i could do way better than that in his twisted mind he created carnage but he's just a maniac 
with some common items. And I've decided to run with that. For my first full body cosplay idea is everything that Carnage is and has and was before he got sentried, but with no real symbiotic help. Like a mix between Carnage and MacGyver. Yeah. Just a crazy person with way too much time on his hands. And yeah, I'm talking about me, not him. Maybe I'll be done before the cons come back. But I've got some planning to do. Till next time.